During the 15th episode of the 14th season of Gold Rush, which is titled Succession, Tony Beetroots provides Parker Schnabel with precisely what Kevin Beetroots desires. What's more, this week, one gold miner is experiencing problems with their machine, another is discovering something unexpected, and the third is taking a significant risk. Here is the most recent information regarding the well-known Discovery series. Succession is the title of the 15th episode of Gold Rush Season 14. What exactly takes place in this episode? As stated by Rotten Tomatoes, the Beetroots family implodes while attempting to get the Paradise Hill trommel running. Parker begins to sluice Australia Creek and discovers a significant piece of information. There is no room for compromise when it comes to Rick's desire to go back to Rally Valley. At this point, there is a lot to unpack. It would appear that the Beetroots family is not making any progress in healing the wounds they have sustained. Their abysmal gold totals are more evidence that they do not respect one another and are unable to work together as a team. Will the Beetroots family be able to put an end to their arguments and begin cooperating? Parker Schnabel, on the other hand, keeps up his diligent job. Therefore, what exactly is this big surprise? There is no clue as to whether this is a positive or negative discovery. We do not know. Last but not least, Rick Ness has decided to move on from the bacon cut. Currently has made his way back to Rally Valley. Is it possible for them to find a means to extract more gold every week? Team Rally has not been successful in achieving its objectives. In the event that he is unable to achieve success at Rally Valley, Rick might be finished. This week on The Discovery Show, in addition to the Gold Rush description, there is even more news and information forthcoming. As stated in the preview that was posted on Twitter, Parker Schnabel takes Tony Beetroots on a tour of his significant acquisition. Consequently, Parker takes Tony on a tour of the Dominion Creek property, throughout which he demonstrates all of the apparatus that he intends to put up for sale. Tony chooses to compliment Parker rather than purchase anything. He is pleased with the achievements that Parker has achieved. Parker expresses his gratitude to Tony in return. He would not be in the position that he is in right now if Tony had not taken a chance on him. Truly, Tony's response was sincere. He disclosed the fact that he was aware of Parker's capabilities as a worker. As a consequence of this, he was content to collaborate with an individual who had dedicated all of his efforts to the achievement of success in his gold mining enterprise. Tony makes the observation that Parker's desire is not something that you would not be able to get at school. To be fair, Parker received his education from the very finest, John Schnabel. In spite of this, Tony's success can be attributed to the difficult lessons he learned. Kevin Beetroots, on the other hand, is looking for credit. In addition to that, he seeks praise. To the contrary, Tony Beetroots did not make any statements of this nature. It appeared as though he took off at the beginning of Gold Rush Season 14 with the justification that he was simply gardening. Instead, it appeared as though he was making an effort to demonstrate to his parents that he was indispensable. A week ago, he came back, but he was not content with his comeback. There is no communication between Tony and Kevin. Hello everyone, welcome back to my Gold Rush channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Within the heart of the Klondike, where dreams are forged in the furnace of grit and determination, the air was thick with the enticing aroma of gold. This was the place where dreams are forged. As the sun descended below the horizon, it threw a warm, golden glow over the expansive expanse that is represented by the Yukon. Within Tony Beetroots and Parker Schnabel, the appeal of striking it rich was an insatiable fire that burned within them. It was a place that had seen the rise and fall of numerous dreamers, but for them, the draw of striking it rich was overwhelming. Tony Beetroots a seasoned mining veteran with a no-nonsense attitude that mirrored the harsh and merciless region that he called home, 
was the protagonist of the story. He was determined when the story began. It was his aged hands that clutched the steering wheel of his excavator as he maneuvered through the labyrinth of dirt roads that led to his mining claim. His hands were scared by years of toil and perseverance. To put it another way, Tummy had essentially constructed an empire from the ground up. As a result of his legendary achievements in the mining business, he was eventually given the nickname The Viking. His unrelenting quest of gold and his inclination for unusual ways earned him a reputation for being a notorious individual. Tony was a formidable opponent in the Klondike, a region of the United States where every ounce of gold was vitally important. Parker Schnabel, a younger but equally tenacious personality, arose on the other side of the Klondike. He was a very determined individual. After receiving the Big Nugget Mine as an inheritance from his grandfather, the young miner with a strong desire to succeed set out to demonstrate that the Schnabel name would become synonymous with achievement. There was a steely resolve that burned within him, yet his baby-faced demeanor believed that intensity. As the seasons progressed, Tony and Parker were both confronted with the unavoidable difficulties that come with mining in the Klondike. These difficulties included severe weather, equipment failures, and the ever-elusive gold. Nevertheless, fate had a way of intertwining their destinies in a way that neither of them could have even remotely anticipated. An important turning point occurred when Tony's experienced crew uncovered a promising deposit on his claim. This deposit promised a motherlode that could compete with any other motherlode in the history of the Klondike. As Tony envisioned the fortune that lay in wait for him beneath the frozen earth, the joy that could be seen in his eyes was tangible. Nevertheless, he was confronted with a significant challenge along the way. The ground was frozen solid, and the conventional mining techniques were proving to be insufficient. Parker Schnabel, whose mining operation was having trouble maintaining profitability, intervened in the situation. He was aware of Tony's recent finding and recognized it as a chance to improve his financial situation. He had heard people talking about it. Parker made a risky step by reaching out to Tony and proposed a collaboration that would involve both crews working together to collect the wealth that was hidden beneath the frozen surface. At first, Tony, who is known for his stern demeanor and his no-nonsense approach, was skeptical. The zeal and commitment that Parker displayed, on the other hand, struck a connection with him. Tony's choice to accept the alliance, which would pave the way for a historic relationship in the Klondike, was a rare example of the great friendship that existed between the two of them. It was a sight to behold to see Tony Beetroots and Parker Schnabel working together to accomplish their goals. In addition to employing time-honored methods that have been handed down from generation to generation, their workers worked tirelessly to implement cutting-edge technology. The frozen earth, which had previously presented a problem, suddenly surrendered to their dogged pursuit revealing veins of gold that shone similarly to buried treasures that were waiting to be uncovered. Along with the beginning of the influx of gold, the two mining titans also began to develop a sense of brotherhood. Tony passed on the knowledge of the Klondike to Parker, passing on the torch to the next generation. Tony's grizzled wisdom contained the secrets of the Klondike. The mining operation that Tommy was running was revitalized as a result of Parker's contribution of a new point of view and unique ideas. Tony and Parker began to build an unexpected connection despite the constant buzz of generators and the clattering of gear that was going on around them. The older Viking and the younger upstart discovered that they had a lot in common, including their unyielding pursuit of their aspirations and their mutual dedication to the quest of gold. At the same time that they were working side by side, the rough landscape of the Klondike became a furnace that formed a friendship that neither of them had anticipated. On a certain day, as the sun descended below the horizon, throwing a golden glow over the mining site, an unanticipated visitor arrived. It was Kevin, the unassuming mechanic who had become an invaluable member of Parker's crew. 
The unsung hero had always been Kevin, who worked diligently behind the scenes to ensure that the machinery continued to function and that the operation continued to be successful. Neither Tummy nor Parker failed to acknowledge Kevin's commitment and effort in his work. In a moment of mutual appreciation, they came to the conclusion that Kevin should be given the respect that he deserved. They assembled the crew, and against the backdrop of the Klondike sunset, they gave Kevin a gesture of their thanks. It was a gold nugget pendant that had been fashioned specifically for him. This pendant was a sign of the teamwork and togetherness that had characterized their joint business. Kevin was caught off guard by the gesture, and as he clasped the dazzling pendant in his hands, he experienced feelings of pleasure and accomplishment about his accomplishment. In the crucible of the Klondike, where the pursuit of gold had brought together three unlikely comrades on a journey of discovery and camaraderie, it was a concrete representation of the relationships that had been made. The Klondike was filled with rumors of a new age in mining, as the story of the extraordinary collaboration between Tummy Beetroots and Parker Schnabel went throughout the region. It was not only that the Viking and the young gun had discovered a motherload of gold, but they had also demonstrated to the entire world that in the pursuit of dreams, alliances could be formed in situations where none appeared to be possible. The story of Tummy Beetroots giving Parker Schnabel what Kevin wanted became a legend in the Klondike. It was passed down from generation to generation as a tribute to the unyielding spirit of individuals who had the courage to dream in the land of gold. As a result, the Klondike continued to weave its tales, with each nugget of gold carrying with it the echoes of dreams that were realized and friendships that were created in the crucible of the gold rush. This took place beneath the watchful gaze of the Northern Lights.